I'm Rob Port from SayAnythingBlog.com. Here with me is former North Dakota Governor Ed Schaefer. And, Governor, I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the Marketplace Fairness Act, which is the Senate has passed in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's being considered in the United States House. Uh, the act would essentially expand the power of the states to implement the, their, their sales and use taxes uh, to the Internet. Currently, and, and this is kind of interesting because it was a Supreme Court case that was settled just before you took office, uh, Quill versus the state of North Dakota, uh, and, and it also involved uh, uh, Heidi Heitkamp, who I believe was uh, current, currently our, our senator, uh, was at the time, I believe, our tax commissioner. Uh, it, basically, the Supreme Court said that in order for the state to implement a tax on a, or, or to, to require that, that, that a business collect the sales tax, they had to have a, have a physical presence in that state. And at the time, we were talking about, uh, you know, catalogs and, and things like that. Uh, today, obviously, it's the internet where people buying and selling things on the internet all the time. Um, really, what this, what this does is this applies, uh, you know, is, is a major expansion of, of the state sales and use taxes. And, you know, the current law as it stands now was really sort of settled in North Dakota. What's your perspective on, on this law? How do you, how do you feel about this? Well, my, my concern, Rob, is we've got this Marketplace Fairness Act, quote, Fairness Act that is going through Congress and, and, um, you know, there's support for it and there's not support for it. And one of the difficulties is, um, this is, this is a setup for a national collection system for sales tax. And I don't think we need a national sales tax collection system. I think we have a system that works pretty well. Last year, $225 billion of uh, goods and services were sold online over the Internet to people around this state, uh, not this only state, but uh, all over the country. And it's really a small, a tiny percentage, a little over 5% of all of the retail transactions takes place. Somehow, uh, we've gotten states that want more revenue. We have tax commissioners like then um, Senator Heitkamp was that want more revenue. You have these people that say, "Oh, you know, we need more revenue," and so they're trying to set up a system that would force people uh, who sell products and services over the internet to collect a sales tax where they don't have to do it now and remit that uh, through the federal government back to the states. That's a system that I think is fraught with danger. I think it sets up a national system. And you know if it passes through Washington, D.C., before it comes back from the states, a lot of the money is going to disappear before it ever gets here. So I think there's some big concerns with the bill uh, from, a, from a revenue standpoint. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm an advocate of saying let's leave things the way they are. They seem to be working uh, uh, based on the Supreme Court ruling on the, on the uh, high camp lawsuit. Um, you know, the uh, retailers that have a presence in a state uh, collect that state sales tax. Uh, retailers that are not present in another state don't collect uh, that sales tax for the state, and that you know that kind of makes some sense. That's kind of interesting too, because one of the one of the nation's largest online retailers, of course, Amazon.com, uh, which sells just about everything it seems these days, uh, actually does collect the sales tax from North Dakotans. In fact, in fact, I I paid that sales tax uh, earlier today when I bought some books uh, because they actually have a, a facility here in North Dakota. So that's an interesting wrinkle in ex- the existing law. Let me ask you about something you said though. You said that that you're concerned was that this was a step towards setting up for a national collection system. Are you concerned that once this system is in place for the states to apply their sales taxes, that the federal government's going to try to tack on a sales tax too? I am concerned. You know, there's a lot of talk about how to increase revenues. Nobody wants to make a more efficient government, a better government, a less costly government. They just want to raise revenues. And there's a lot of talks about, you know, let's have a national sales tax. You know, they call it a national use tax or a consumption tax or a VAT, a value-added tax. Let's put some kind of a new national sales tax system in. This would be a vehicle for them to do so. And, you know, not only are you bringing 50 different taxing jurisdictions into play, if you read that legislation, it also defines uh, Indian tribes as being a taxable entity, so you've got, you know, 1,500 or 1,300 or however many, uh, you know, Indian tribes that are around, maybe more, that also become taxable entities that that, uh, any kind of a collection system is going to have to deal with. So, you know, it's very much a complicated, difficult national system that doesn't make any sense for local folks. 
Um, for instance, you you know you you mentioned um, Amazon. Amazon has a distribution center in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Um, they get a chance to, uh, you know, they have a, what they call nexus. They have a relationship with the state. They have a presence in the state. Therefore, if you go on to the internet and buy that book, and and you pay North Dakota sales tax that they collect and remit to the state, um, that's fine. That works great. But but here's a big difference. There was recently an article um, that that went around in the North Dakota media about a bookseller in Fargo, North Dakota. And that bookseller, a friend of mine, has got a great shop, sells a lot of good books, you know, said, you know, I need to get this I'm uh, in place because I'm sick and tired of those big inter- Internet retailers like Amazon taking business away from me when they don't have to pay the tax. Well, you know, you pass this tax, it's not going to change one thing for that book retailer because Amazon is already collecting the tax. So in North Dakota. The other thing that's interesting, Rob, is this, this is supposed to be a fairness act Marketplace Fairness Act should be a Marketplace Revenue Act, but it's a Fairness Act. That same, I can I can go to that bookstore in North Dakota and pay the sales tax buying it off the retail shelf. I can drive across the river into Minnesota and buy a book and have them send it to me in North Dakota so it's not being, quote, used in Minnesota, and therefore I don't pay the Minnesota sales tax. Now, where's the fairness in that? You know, so, I mean, this, this, this fairness idea is really, uh, you know, something to raise revenue, but the, you know, we have a system that works. States have different sales tax situations. The states have compacts to not charge sales or, uh, or, or do charge sales tax. You know, there are a lot of issues here that we're trying to incorporate into a national system, which really, in the end, doesn't make any sense. One one thing we do hear a lot, and and there are, uh, uh, frankly, Governor, uh, uh, people, you know, uh, members of your own party uh, here in North Dakota who support it. Tax Commissioner Corey Fong is a supporter of the legislation. Uh, Senator, former Governor uh, Senator John Hoven uh, is is a supporter, voted for the legislation in the United States Senate. Their argument, as as I've heard it from them, seems to center around the idea that that it's unfair that quote unquote brick and mortar retailers that have you know a physical store that you go into and you actually buy the items have to collect the sales tax and remit it to the state as opposed to an online retailer that they may be competing with which doesn't now when i hear those arguments one thing that i think of is that actually online retail is a pretty small slice of the pie people still really really like going to stores and touching the items and seeing the items that they're going to buy before they buy them but what, what do you make of that argument, this idea that it needs to be, that, that it's unfair for, for the existing retailers that the online retailers don't have to collect the tax? Well, you know, if you look at, if you look at North Dakota and you listen to our tax commissioner, Corey Fong, uh, you know, he, he talks about fairness, but in the end he talks about revenue. You know, we're missing the revenue, we're not getting it. North Dakota imposes a sales tax on sales in North Dakota. If you buy something from Arizona, and, and ship it to North Dakota and don't pay the tax. You're supposed to, you know, fill out the form and pay that tax in North Dakota. So, um, you know, the system is there. The, 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 uh, imposing of taxes in place. Tax commissioners like revenues. You know, that's what they're looking for. And let me give you an example of the retail aspect of this. Um, I'm thinking of the consumer more than the retailer right here. So, you know, people would say, is it fair? Here's how it works for a consumer. A rural state like North Dakota, somebody that's living in a ranch or a farm that's 50 miles, 60 miles from their trading area, they jump in the pickup, drive to town, and they have limited selection in a small market town. Uh, They have a lot of products you can't get. You've got limited access, limited selection. You may not get the color you want or the size you want or whatever the case may be. Well, I can go home 60 miles away, order that product on the Internet where I have full selection, full accessibility, and it's going to cost me some some shipping and handling to get it there, but I get the product I want. So what about the trade-off of being posted shipping and handling um, versus paying the Internet sales tax? Uh, you know, I, I'd go for the consumer. I just as soon have them have the selection of goods and services that they want, have it accessible, and being willing to pay a little extra to get it for them, and they live in a remote spot, 
than saying, well, it isn't fair to the retailer when I get into town and I don't pay the sales tax. Um, you know, the, the trade-off to the consumer is about equal or a little more costly because of where you choose to live and work. Well, isn't there also, I mean, yes, you know, and a lot of online retailers do collect the sales tax. You know, Barnes & Noble, Amazon are a couple of, of big examples. But but isn't it also true that if, if, even if you're shopping at an online retailer which doesn't collect your state sales tax, you still have to pay shipping, right? I mean, because that's one thing I hear about a lot is that the, the online retailers have a competitive advantage because they don't have to collect the sales tax, but also... You know, a lot of times, honestly, as a consumer, Governor, when I make, you know, when my wife and I want to buy something, we might look on Amazon, but if the price is the same as Walmart, we may just drive down the street to Walmart because we can have it today. If we order through Amazon, we got to pay shipping, we got to wait a couple of days, and then it gets here. So is it that, I mean, really, it seems like that's pretty fair. They don't collect the sales tax, but they have to ship it, and they have to charge you shipping and, and issues like that. Well, the other crazy thing is you can go on Walmart's website and order it online, you know? Yeah. So... I mean, it, it, the point is you have a convenience, an accessibility, and a selection of goods and services over the Internet that you don't get with your local retailer. And so the consumer has an advantage if they so choose to buy that way. And as I mentioned, sometimes you pay the extra postage and freight so that, you know, you can have that access. Uh, you can you can drive to Chicago and buy it where they might have the selection, but hey, you know I'm willing, I'm willing to pay the UPS truck to come out to you know to deliver it. So uh, you know I think I think again in fairness, let's think about fairness to the consumer. The consumer is what is driving these sales, and like you said, you know five or six percent of all retail transactions are handled uh, over the internet or online these days. You know it's not a huge piece of it. We all like to go down to our local store. We like to have the personal service. We like to have the person saying, you know, hi, Rob, when you come in the store and selling you what you want. And often if you can't get it, they'll order it for you. Uh, but, you know, you want, it's just, you know, there's the fairness of access and selection that you don't get in a rural state like North Dakota that I'm really concerned about increasing prices to consumer by forcing uh, taxable entities to pay a sales tax that may or may not require it if you went into the same retail store when you're in that state. One last question, and, and I, I think this is interesting because I think it's a it's a piece of our history that a lot of people have forgotten. Uh, I, I often heard my grandmother, who, whose parents homesteaded here in North Dakota around the turn of the century, talk about how important uh, you know the Montgomery Wards catalog was or the Sears and Roebuck catalog was because it allowed them to shop beyond you know what you know their communities i mean because back then i mean my grandma still remembers uh going into town on the horse and buggy uh so uh, you know really I, the, the, you know that the catalog shopping experience was very important to rural america do you feel that the online shopping experience is equally important M meaning that because we talk a lot about how you know the, the people are moving from rural communities into the cities and, and it seems to be like that a big reason why they do that is because of access you know ease of access to goods and services that they might not get in those rural sur those rural communities so it seems to me that with the, the rise of online retail, we've really, you know, made it easier for these people to stay in those rural communities, you know, like, like you know, that, that, you know, a lot of North Dakotans believe, you know, we're all kind of saddened when we see those communities die. Do you, do you think online retail is important to that? I, I do. I think it goes back to your first comments when we started this conversation, which is, you know, this was started by uh, Tax Commissioner Heitkamp and then Attorney General Nick um, Space to sue a catalog company to make them pay sales tax in North Dakota. And, you know, the, 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 the retail, online retail opportunities today are the same to, to our citizens that choose to live and work in rural America as the sales catalogs were the pioneers of North Dakota in the past. I mean, that is today the way we shop. And, you know, literally, if you want to go to Target, you can go to the retail store or you can go online. If you want to go to Sears, you can go to the retail store or you can go online. This is a convenience issue. It's an opportunity for people to live and work where they want and still have access to selection and materials and products and services that you just can't get um, when you are dealing with small local retail operations. Governor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Rob. Good to be with you.